You ready? Boom! Free giveaway in today's episode. Of course, we give stuff away all the time. So here's what we're going to give you today if you win the contest, which we do every single episode. You'll get a free box of live-on acetyl L-carnitine. Now, acetyl L-carnitine, if absorbed, which this is absorbed because they have a patented process, gets into your system and increases androgen receptor density. That means your current levels of testosterone become much more effective. So here's how you can win this free box. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours. If we pick your comment as the best comment among all the comments, we'll notify you and then we'll mail this box or a, an unopened box. This one's open because I took some earlier. An up unopened brand new box of Live On Acetyl L-Carnitine right to your door. Also, subscribe to this channel turn on your notifications. And finally, we are running a program sale. So MAPS hit is 50% off. The No BS six pack formula, 50% off. You can find these at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July special with no space for that discount. All right. Enjoy this amazing show. Did you catch uh, Justin's workout? This morning, I it's got the one the, that's on film. Catch it! It was I, in your face. <laughs> I got so I, I showed up what twenty minutes or so late to work out today. It's my day in the life, so I was um, doing a prediction of what would what would be. Going oh, like up. before you came in? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so here's the you know I'm yeah, coming I'm in. Sure, little, I'm sure you're way off because we're not creatures that happen. Oh all. man, was I yeah. almost dead on? And honestly, I I, I, I was disappointed. Sal didn't have his headphones on. That I missed on that. I forgot them today. <laughs> Is that why? Yes. Oh damn. So what uh, were your predictions? So I said, uh, well, you mean you can watch it on the story. So, I mean, uh, Andrew can post up so the, the, the viewers can see my exact predictions. But All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, any guesses on what everyone's doing when they walk in? So it's like uh, a 820 right now. Um, so that means Sal should be midway into his workout. I'm guessing we're in a wife beater by now. So he's probably got a good pump. He's got his generic big headphones on. Uh, walking around puffed out and then uh, Justin is probably pushing a sled and then I'm betting Doug who by the way lives around the corner is still not here whoa I was pretty accurate on this guy what's Justin doing over there morning big guy morning. you got this guy in here today huh yeah, huh Justin's, hey, Justin's swinging clubs. I predicted you'd be pushing the sled. I was close. Hey, pretty close though, you know, pretty close. I wasn't expecting Andrew to be in here. Uh, you know, pretty spot on, Sal. Uh, I said, by this time, I said, Sal will be peeled down to his wife beater. Mm -hmm. Probably <laughs> walking around, flexing or right puffed out. 8.30. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly I said, how I walked I said he'll, be, <laughs> he'll probably have his, uh, I said, his generic big headphones on that he'll have, he'll be rocking. Yeah. I said, and then Justin will probably uh, be uh, driving a sled. And then I said, Doug, who mm -hmm. lives around the corner, probably still won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> and I was right on all of it, except for your headphones. Well, yeah. Justin was actually swinging the clubs, and yeah. then 10 minutes later, he was pushing the sled. Yeah. So I was pretty pretty he, close. He was Whoa. moving some weight this morning. Listen, you, you, you would have uh, been accurate if I wouldn't have had to like explain everything I was doing, uh, which really annoys me. But you know what? It's fine, because I, I definitely enjoyed... Uh, you know, doing that and having that sort of a, a thing that I was going to do, but such the trainer in you, yeah. I was so annoyed I had to explain what I was doing, dude. Man, I just want to, <laughs> like, when I work out, I just want to work out. Yeah, you know no, I, I mean? get it. I'm, ra I'm razzing you, but 100 percent agree with you that that isn't that something funny? That's your about special time, dude. Right. There's right. only two special times you have. One right. of them is, and you spend. So, you, like, you want to come in the bedroom with me next? Like, what are we doing here? For me, explain what many years teaching other people. I remember this was actually one of the the challenges I always had when I was dating somebody. And uh, we would try and work out together. And of course they want, you know, uh, the, my expertise, if that's what I do, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? And like, uh -huh. the, the, I'm taking my headphones off. I'm having to explain every time. And like, I would get so frustrated, but I, you know, it's like, dude, you, that's your job, right? You do that all day long with tons of people for many years. You, I think that you start to, uh, I don't know, you start, um, what's the word I'm looking for as far as uh, you, you hold your workouts as sacred. Totally. Right? Oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's totally. Like, this is my time where I don't got to teach, where I can just do what I want to do and for whatever reasons I want. Because that's the other thing too. Everyone's like, well, why did you do that? 
Why, why did you go over there from that one? Or why only this many sets? Well, like, especially since we're explaining things all day long now. Like, mm-hmm. that's our life, right? Mm-hmm. Which is great. Uh, I mean, even with, when, with to my kids, you know, when I get home too, I'm just like, everything is always me kind of like trying to explain what I'm doing. So that's just like, well, I just like to hyper focus and to just get in the zone and just kind of do the work. Yeah, that's a, for 100%. That's my special time. It's like, yeah. don't talk to me. Like, leave me alone. I don't want to hear about chores and shit I did wrong. <laughs> like, let me just do yeah. my shit. And, and let me work out. But I'll, I'll, so I'll tell you what happened this morning. So I come in before Justin, right? And I forgot my headphones. So annoying. I can't stand it when I do that, but I'm like, whatever. So I Bluetooth up my phone to the speaker. And Justin and I will often listen to similar workout when we're both working out hard, right? So yeah. it's like Sepultura. Yeah, I came into straight death metal. So, no, no. <laughs> so I had mine on. Fuck you, you tiny dead people. You got me really fucked up. I'm trying to do some stuff today. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what well, I want to do. So hold I, need on. A, I need a little anger. Good morning. In there. Well, hold on. First of all, first of all, we're going to go science here. Studies okay, right. show <laughs> that music makes a big difference. Thank you. Big difference in performance. Obviously, it's different from person to person, but it makes a huge difference in performance. But here's the, here's the thing I was going to say. There's levels to evil music. <laughs> yes. I had mine on, and I thought, he's going to love this shit. Well, obviously, Justin's coming in here to break things, so he's yeah. listening, and he's like, I got to change this shit. I'm like, yeah. change well, this? I, like, I, I sort of showed my true library? colors yeah. a little bit today, <laughs> which was uh, a little vulnerable. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't typically do that. That's one of the funny things is uh, I always... I, I'm always like, I can't, I can't play this on a speaker and have people listen to what I actually listen to when I work out because it's just not compatible. Let's yeah. just say. Uh, so yeah, it, it I mean, was. Next and you level. were playing good music, no doubt. It was good music, but I had this intention of of trying to do like one or two things that was like pressing it a bit for me. And and to be completely transparent, I even like yesterday had to make sure I could still do it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like kind of going through the motion, you know, kind of prepping a little bit. And I'm like, oh man. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't really like pushed it in a bit, so I, I tried to push a little bit. Uh, definitely, uh, I'm gonna feel it tomorrow. I'm yeah, he he was overhead pressing Big Bertha, the big what is it, 120 pound yeah, honey, monster kettlebell. You can single arm press that. Yeah. yeah wow. He's a moose. Yeah. Justin. What a is moose. that? One one thirty five or one hundred twenty? It's one twenty one twenty three. I think. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a it's a monster. So yeah, so. he had to put on the scary. Like there, like I said, there's a that was the top. Like I was like, yeah, when I'm when I'm feeling good, I can probably get like 90s on the circus press. But if you hit 120 on that monster, yeah, ooh. dude, yeah, let's just. I can't wait to see what like, the mind pump meme guy does with my face. I have no idea what my <laughs> what kind of faces I was making as I'm working out. You know, like I'm sure it was just. Yeah. He's been on fire lately. What did so, you post the other day? I started to laugh. Oh, the the uh, the mind pump handshake. Oh, yeah. Wait, no. oh yeah. And then somebody <laughs> underneath it, I don't know if you guys saw it, someone underneath it actually commented on who's each guy. Oh, you know, so yeah. you were the guy that's doing the, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. walking around to each one of us to hype us all up. Doug was the first guy. I was the second guy who you jumped into my lap. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. And then Justin was the last guy who got the little ass slap or whatever. Slap. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. I, I know. People Good got game. a ton of likes. Good game. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's funny. No, and you know, it's funny. When, when I'm doing my own thing, I have almost no regard to, I mean, some regard, but <clears throat> almost none to my own safety. Like, if I feel like I'm going to lift something heavy, like, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm in the zone. But when I'm watching someone else, I'm like safety guy, right? So I'm watching yeah. Justin hoist this big ass, heavy, full on iron kettlebell up to his shoulder, and I'm like, please God, don't let this. <laughs> please be, don't break something. Yeah, don't let this be like a filmed like injury. I said uh, it'll go viral. That's what cool. I was thinking about yesterday. <laughs> I was like, oh God, don't go hurt yourself, dude, because we're trying to live up to what Sal <laughs> yeah. said. I mean, no lie, exactly. That that sort of like uh, you know gave me that extra incentive, and I was a little bit concerned because last night I didn't get the greatest of sleep and I'll tell you why because we watched so somebody had recommended a movie to me because of I think they know that I'm into cults and like this is sort of a <laughs> thing that I'm like obsessed with uh and I had no idea this genre existed I mean I'm sure you might you know I, you don't watch scary movies so I'm not oh, going to okay. include you again <laughs> um but uh it's it's cult horror so oh, it's like psychological uh, uh, terror that uh, it, it, it was. This movie is called Empty Man. It was horrible. Oh, oh no, it was, it was terrifying. Wait, Empty Man. I want to watch that. Oh, it was it was terrifying, dude. Oh, I love that. And not only that. Oh, so, so it was the, horrible because it was scary, or was it horrible because it was terrible to no, watch? Because like, it's like it, twisted. It sounds because like. it messes. It, it's one of those. This guy loves it, that it, stuff. It messes with your brain, you know, like the way that you think and stuff. It's it's like 
in the mouth of madness or like yes. you know event horizon like those always scared me more than uh you know the slasher movies or, yes. or jumpy movies like no big deal right these like get into your brain and and you know <laughs> scramble everything you're like oh, yes i don't like this that's how i judge a scary movie do i feel a little bit uh like do i, do I feel different afterwards Bro. In a bad way. Like, so do I feel bad afterwards. <laughs> then I know this was a good one. You know what I'm I pulled Courtney in on this because I was like, I don't know if I can watch this by myself. You know, <laughs> I'm like watching it. And she was so mad at me for making her watch this with me. Like they pulled out all the stops in this movie. It was just like like children of the corn, like like this whole like all these cult members together would like all of a sudden turn, you know, and look, and then they're like close to oh. you. And then Hey, look at Adam squeezing his water dude, bottle right now. I, well, like, <laughs> I was like, Ooh. You know what I want to know? What is the psychology behind what drives humans to to want to watch? Do you like roller coasters? I do, but it's different. No, it's similar. What I mean dude. is it's the it's the excitement of getting scared but being safe. Yeah. That's all it is. That's it. It's, you're not, yeah, he's not actually inside. I mean, the is movie. that the true that psychology was, on it? Is that the yeah. psychology, Doug, of want, wanting to watch a scary movie? Because I, I mean, I get what happens to you as far as the uh, adrenaline, uh, it's, it's adrenaline, adrenaline rush, ride. but it, it doesn't end there. It's not like like a roller coaster, you go over the hill and it's like, Hoo! and then it's over. Yeah, <laughs> wait, hold on. You watch a scary <laughs> Back movie. Back up for a second. Wow. Although I've never done that on a roller coaster. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> like you, you had a premature situation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. You you do it and then it's like oh man that was awesome and then it's over. Yeah. Scary movies not true ruin the whole night. No, not true whole Maybe, night. Well, that's because that's because you're you're you know a little scaredy cat. But here's the here's the thing. <laughs> Let me ask you this: When you were younger and you were driving fast and stuff in your car, now looking back as an adult man, can you see some of the dangerous like real dangerous shit you did? Of course. But it was the excitement that you. You know, like exhilarating. Yeah, like here's level. here's. Uh, by, by the way, don't do this. This is literally one of the stupidest possible things you could do. But I remember talking to Adam because him and I were very similar in how dumb we were with our cars when we were younger. <laughs> how dumb we were. There was this game that I played with oh, my yeah. friends, which in, is in the, the dumb. Seriously, if my kid did this, I would take his car away, and he would not drive for years. We would drive on a dirt road with no, obviously, no street lights, and we'd turn off the headlights and then play chicken. Who is the first person to turn yell to on. turn the headlights on? Yeah. So you're literally driving in pitch black. Adam, you did the same thing. Yeah, in the fog, we used to race. Yeah, so, really yeah, and you would race people. It's so stupid. stupid, but what, what the psychological phenomena behind that is you're. You're scared and terrified, but then you're safe. So scary movies emulate that. So, but you just have a different. I mean, that's tolerance. an interesting theory that I can't completely agree with because I would never do something like that or do that like right before I want to go to bed. Yeah, because like <laughs> that was like, the problem. Like when I did stuff like that. Okay, when I did this, the the stupid. Are you, hold on, are I you admit, in bed? I admit that was. A are problem. you in bed like with the sheets up, like looking around? No, like I'm watching the movie. <laughs> I'm watching the movie like this. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, or pretending like I need to do something on my shoe, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that type of deal. Yeah. You know? yeah, well, true. <sighs> I haven't watched a movie that did that to me in a long time, but I was doing that. And I was, the only way I could get through it was to, like, yell at it, you know? And I'm, I'm like that guy. I'm like, no, what are you doing? Why? You know, why would you do this? And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to go get myself something now, to eat. If I'm I like, start, if you hear, if you ever watch me watch a movie like that and you hear me start laughing, yeah. you know it's getting to me. Yes. Because I'll, Something I was will happen, my way through too. and I'll start laughing. Yeah. And I'm, what I'm laughing at is myself. Like, oh, they got me. Like yeah. that. This is messing with my head a little bit. Yeah. I like. My that. sister loves it. My kids, I do yeah. not. I wouldn't do it every night. It's a once in a while thing where you push it that hard. But yeah. then there's other horror movies that are just fun and campy because I appreciate the genre so much. So like watching uh, horror movies from the '80s, like Friday the Thirteenth or Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street. Yeah, they're kind of campy. They're gro they're gruesome, but there's there's an art to them. On Netflix, there's this series that taps into that that is really good and it's new and it's trending right now. It's Fear Street. Have you guys seen oh, these? Oh, I've seen the preview. I haven't watched that, but so there's Fear Street 1994. Right, okay, now I saw that. Is it based off of R.L. Stein's yes. series? Oh, it is. Yes. And they did a good job. I of, read most of those, so I'd be interested in watching. So that. it's a really good job of that kind of campy, right. old school where, kind where of where you horror. actually get resolve. Uh, no. So okay. No, they. I got no. Res dude, I want honestly. Like, I don't recommend this movie. By the way, so <laughs> I, I, I think you, you're gonna waste a lot of your time and you're gonna suffer through the night. That's now, all I'm saying. now, were you sober when you watched it, or did you have an edible or something? You had an edible, so that makes that it worse. Totally intensified. Yeah, you me. don't want to watch. You don't want to do something that. In 
increases your paranoia. And it was all like psychologically, like, it, it, I mean, they're talking about like your brain's itching right now. And I'm just like, no, it's not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude. It's yeah, yeah, like in this thing. I I but how be- different are all, you're watching that. I'm watching the NBA finals last night. What are you watching last night? Uh, I watched, I was watching Fear Street. So I watched Fear oh, Street yeah. 1994. Then the next one. Doug, what were you watching last night? I didn't watch anything. No TV last night. None. Dirty movies. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that means. <laughs> I, I don't classify Bro, that. Did you count the laptop you as a screen? Yeah. He's like, oh, uh, I wasn't watching anything. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not what your history says. Okay, no, actually, I, I did watch. I watched that... Uh, uh, what's it called? Born to Choose? Or what's it called? Oh, oh Free to Choose. Free to, free to Choose. choose. Milton Milton yeah, I was watching that. Tell me how good that is. That is good. You know, the thing about Milton Friedman that I... See, now you fucked everything up because you brought him up. So now I'm going to talk about Milton Friedman. Oh, my God. What you I know, do? the thing about him that's so incredible is he takes... He makes everything so very easily to, easy to understand, very pragmatic. Um, he doesn't get caught up in the minutia of his... Uh, you know, how he talks about economics, how it affects people and freedom. Highly recommend. It's a it's an old series that was filmed, I believe, in the 1970s, early 80s, but it's so relevant. And what's good about it is he makes predictions, or he talks about what will happen if certain things happen, mm-hmm. and those things did happen. And sure enough, his predictions came very true. So it, it stands this test of time. So there good. was a really good one. I went down the rabbit hole too on that Doug of Milton Freeman. It's Sal was sending over stuff, and so that that's probably why Doug and I both were watching it and. Uh, I found this video of him, and the title is uh, Milton Freeman Debates Young Michael Moore. Yeah. You mm. told me it's not Michael Moore. No, but it looks like it. But the, the, I found uh, the debate really compelling because the, the person who, who stood up to, to challenge Milton Freeman, I thought had a very interesting argument that at, f- at first or face value, I would actually kind of agree. Like he made it, he talks about uh, Ford. Um, they, Ford did the Pinto. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. Ford did the Pinto. So Ford came out with the Ford Pinto, and I don't remember what year it was, but he came out with the Ford Pinto. And I guess that uh, they did not put this piece in. It would have been in like, I guess it was like a $15, 13 or $15 piece of plastic, like a plastic box that was supposed to be between the bumper and the gas tank. And Ford opted not to do that. The reason why they opted not to do that, because $15 times, I don't know how many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of vehicles would cost millions of dollars to put that in the vehicle. And they were trying to keep it at a certain price Mm -hmm. point. And uh, it was estimated that 200 people a year would potentially die from this from this. And so th- when I hear that, I'm like, oh my God, they put a car out there that, yeah. you know, statistically speaking, that they would probably, you know, they, they would know for sure that 200, oh, 1971 mm-hmm. to 76. So 200 people would p- potentially die. And the, the case the kid was trying to make was that, you know, that government should make them do that for safety reasons. Mm-hmm. They should have to do that. And uh, he goes into the, he, and I, I'm thinking, this, wow, man, that's not a bad case. I could, get behind that obviously like that's dangerous but then the way he spun it and explained what the kid was trying to ask because his response back to him is said well <clears throat> you know what if the park costs two million dollars to put in there okay well it's not it was 13 oh, just 13 dollars mm-hmm. he goes well that, you're you're arguing the wrong points it's about principle and so you know how much is the is the that life saving those lives value at what at? price would it not be worth it exactly at what price is it worth it and not worth it at and that's why he did the exaggeration of 2 million dollars and the, you could see the kids kind of wheels kind of spinning and he goes listen that's the beauty of the free market is that y- you make the choice that okay i want to buy this car the pinto which was designed to be this cheap car that people could afford that's correct uh and with that it's a risk we all know that you could buy some car. You could buy a Hummer, right? You can buy a Hummer for a hundred thousand dollars. That is literally a tank on wheels, and I guarantee that it, the same amount of people would not die from the same rear end accident that would from a Pinto. But then you also pay a hundred thousand dollars instead of ten thousand or whatever the Pinto. That was. choice goes to the consumer. It's uh, same reason like why why do we sell junk food, which accounts for more deaths by far 
than almost anything else, right? Why do we sell any product that could potentially be right. dangerous? At the end of the day, <clears throat> the choice goes to the consumer to make these uh, particular, uh, you know. And yeah, there's and always a that's risk. That's why there's uh, competitors too. Like, like you get like a Volvo or, or one of these other like yeah. type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, vehicle manufacturers that are just specifically focused on that point of safety, yeah. right? Uh, right? And so that's going to appeal to a certain type of consumer versus, you know, another consumer that wants all of the bells, whistles, wants the high performance knows that there's a lot of risk involved plus right. plus this is a hypothetical argument if right. you if you if you actually go back and look at cars that were actually made by the state because there were a few the soviet union and in, in east germany they germany had, did the the bug right is no that, no the, what, the, what they do well that was that became of course there was competitors and stuff like that i'm talking about cars where the state actually said here's the car this is what you guys are going to drive we're taking care of it and they were terrible they were terrible polluting Dangerous. Yeah, do you know the history machines. of the Cadillac converter? And I, so I was watching something. I went down a rabbit hole one day and actually heard some of that too. That there was like a lot of the car companies were uh, actually fighting that. They didn't. They knew that how much pollution that it was creating, and then mm. all they had to do was put a Cadillac converter on there, and they refused to do it. So there was a time when you didn't have to have that on there. Do you know the history no, of that? No, I don't oh, know that. Okay, you have to look. But it up. here's a good example. I don't know if it's like this anymore. But when I was a kid, so this is a bit of a. There's a bit of a monopoly when it comes to. Uh, School buses, right? School bus company. There's a private company that makes a school bus that signs a contract with public schools, and then they become the only provider of school buses. Now, when I was a kid, we knew wearing seatbelts was safe. You had to wear seatbelts. Always yeah. wear seatbelts. The one vehicle that I would be in that didn't even have seatbelts was a school bus. Yeah. The this was that's all filled with kids. Kids, and yeah. there's no seatbelts whatsoever, yeah. right? So in real life, it's actually <laughs> always typically much worse. But yeah, I, I appreciate the way he you know he presents uh, some of that stuff. So. Speaking of kids, I have some kid stories for you. For, first one is Max. I'll share last to last night watching the game, and uh, he's uh, he's going whenever he goes to these kind of leaps that he's going through or regressions, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he's he's extra attached to me, like he's. Already, you guys see how he is with me and everything like that. And then when he is, uh, you know, going through a growth spurt or teeth molars coming yeah. in or something like that, it's like just as soon as I walk in the door, he's attached to me till he goes to bed. And he's now at this the age and size that we're climbing on the bed. We now know how to open doors and stuff like that. So there, I can't get away. I mean, bathroom time is not even free time for me, right? And I don't know if it was on the podcast or this was just, uh, I don't know if I remember when I shared just last week or the week before we left on vacation, the you know, my embarrassing moment of not shaking enough before, after I go into the bathroom. Like yeah. That. I don't know. That wasn't on the podcast, right? That was I don't off. know if it was on the podcast. <laughs> I don't think so. You're yeah, referring yeah. to the post, the post pee dribble. <laughs> yeah. 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 Every guy knows. Yeah. 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 That exactly. That's right. Yeah. If you're trying to say that's never happened to you, piss off. And Get listen, out of here. whoever came up with this arbitrary rule of you that's shake right. it like three that's times, right. like anymore as you're playing, like, Get out of here. You're every shaking guy, as many times you need to. Every yeah. guy has pulled his drawers up at a baseball game or a hurry or something like that. Yeah, and a little re extra comes out. And realized, Damn it. Yeah. I should have shook two more times before, right? Yeah. 100%. So, anyways, we were talking about that the other day, right? Science. So that was fresh in my mind because we had just talked about that. This this guy follows me into the bathroom, going to the bathroom, can't get no peace and stuff like that. And it's like, I used to try and fight it. Then he yells and he bangs on the door, makes a big deal, so just whatever, let him in. And so he's messing with me as I'm on the toilet and 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 getting and getting on trying to climb on me. I'm like, no, 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 Max, this, that. But, well, anyways, we finished going to the bathroom. I pull my drawers up. And I'm like, oh, again, <laughs> right? And it's like, but this is soaked. He was, he's drooling so bad right now. So oh. when he was trying to climb on my, he drooled into my underwear. Oh. And so my, my underwear was soaked. And when I pulled it up, I thought you I like. thought it was you. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was me. I'm like, how did that happen? You know, it's, I was sitting there for like five minutes. There's no way I didn't shake enough or get it out. You yeah, know what I'm saying? has a mind of its own. Oh, right? man. <laughs> Pull him up and my drawers were all soaking wet. And I'm. And I realized that he was drooling in my underwear while I was doing that. So oh, uh, there's, there's your first kid story. Now, this other, is a, these are great stories to tell when, a good excuse, when though, they start to become <laughs> embarrassed by dad. Like when you have their friends over yeah. and they're like, hey, oh, what's, oh, this is my friend John. Oh, hey, what's up, John? Hey, let me tell you a story about the time. <laughs> about my son. Oh. About the time your friend there uh, you know, got my I underwear think I, I told this story on the podcast before about <laughs> when uh, a dog peed on my crotch. N no. Right? On your crotch? I know when your dog peed on, on your shoe. I remember when your dog shit on your shoe. Well, that was a different. That's that's my dog I have right now. That's you know, he, yeah, he's special. But <laughs> no, this was when I was a kid, and I was at uh, my friend's house, and we actually were there with a bunch of adults. It was like a party or something, 
I was outside and um, the dog kept like sniffing my crotch and like I was like get out of here and it was it was like a golden retriever or something and uh, we're out there just kind of playing and uh, all of a sudden the dog keep dude the dog would not leave me alone it just kept like going right for the crotch so obviously smelled something enticing I don't know what <laughs> was going on there wanted to like claim it or something <laughs> lifts his leg up literally drives starts peeing on my crotch and I'm just like like baffled by this and i'm like oh oh and i'm like and my friend was the only one that saw it and she was like oh my god <laughs> and started laughing and i'm like pushing the dog off me i'm all mad i storm inside and uh you know i'm like oh my god the dog peed on me and there and everybody in there was oh yeah okay, sure yeah, yeah right yeah. nobody believed me they're like oh this guy just peed himself and came up with this cover story of the dog peeing on him to this day well, Only yeah, one I, person believes me. I wouldn't it, believe that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that cold yeah. bullshit too. Dude, it was it's like, like it was the, the most random thing. That's it's like ever. the people that go to the emergency room with yeah. something stuck up their butt. And, oh, yeah. I oh, yeah, the, the batteries, shower. four batteries in their yeah. up their butt. And they're like, oh, I slipped <laughs> and fell. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, no. it's like a shaved carrot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 so you take I was taking a shower while I was making a salad. It's so strange. You won't even believe what happened. What are the odds, right? This is So, are you are you guys getting close to the to potty training or what? Yeah. So that's all. We're all we're going through a all kinds of big transition for him right now. So we're, get, we're getting one, ready man. to put him in a uh, uh, Montessori. I don't think I'm yeah. Montessori, right? Not Sari Montessori school. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I know Montessori. Sorry. Right? So, so you looked Mon into it and you are uh, thinking about. Enrolling? Yeah. Three days a week. He's going to be in a, in a Montessori school. Awesome. Uh, you can start them at three days a week at a Montessori school. If they're not potty trained, they'll actually assist and help that. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, and then once he is, then he can go full time there. Uh, so we're, we're starting to, to do that with him. Um, was it? Oh, as I was going to tell you the, he's, he's, you could tell we're real close to like starting to string some words together. Like he's all these new sounds this week. Cause he was hanging out with my two buddies, kids who are a year and a half mm -hmm. and a year older and they're talking uh, and they're just such a cool, this is one of my favorite ages. When you start getting to that three to five range and they can say things and you can a little personality. Yeah. I just up. told you guys the other day how I taught my, my buddy's daughter, uh, kosher. And yeah. then she oh, was, right. in this, so my other buddy, uh, we were getting ready to leave to go to the lake. And he was like screaming at his dad because you know, he was, dad and, and Justin was doing something in the house. I don't know what he was doing. And he's trying to get his attention and Justin was busy and uh, he was starting to get really frustrated and want to cry. And I, hey, Hunter, relax. Come here. I said, listen, if you ever want to get your dad's attention when you want to leave, you yell, regulators. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and he looks at me all kind of weird. I said, yes, can you say that? Yeah. And he, and he tries to say it a couple times. And he gets a regulator. And so then he starts, dad, regulators, <laughs> regulators. <laughs> and Justin starts laughing. He's like, what the That's hell? Ridiculous. I said, he gets his attention. So it worked, right? Yeah. So now, now he's he like, does it. Now he does it all the time, right? Uh, so my buddy awesome. sent me a video of him in the grocery store. Uncle Adam, Uncle Adam, regulators. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's hilarious. Like, oh, man, that's a favorite age. Yeah, right what, you know what's funny is when they start to, when they get out of diapers, they're learning to go to the bathroom on their own, and then there's this transitionary period where they're on the toilet, they figured out how to poop, but they don't wipe yet. So then they go to the bathroom, and they're like, Dad, Dad, and you got to go in there and wipe. And yeah. I remember when my yeah. son first did this, for, you go in there and you wipe for them, right, or whatever, and then you teach them, okay, you got to try doing this on your own. Well, anyway, the first time he did it, like... I go to, you know, change him or what. I'm like, oh my God, like there's poop yeah. and you're like, did you wipe? Like, how did you wipe? He's like, yeah, I wipe, I wipe. I said, okay, next time you go to the bathroom, let me see how you wipe. So you go to the bathroom and wipe and he would just wipe his cheek. Like just, the <laughs> just the yeah. I like no, the the, you gotta wipe the middle, you're, dude. Yeah. You're missing. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. missing by about six <laughs> inches. So. Yeah, bro. He would literally. He get it. Uh, we're like doing wipe a, it in a circle on his cheek. Dude, uh, uh, Everett would do the opposite, right? So it would take the entire roll, just be like, <laughs> <laughs> until it was like the toilet. The whole thing was done, and then just smash it all in there, right? Oh. And then it would just like particles were everywhere. Oh. So know? we're we're doing a method that uh, starts Thursday. Katrina's going to start at that. Um, I, I don't remember. We didn't definitely. I know we didn't do this with my younger brother and sister when we were potty training them. Uh, and I don't know what the name of it is. Maybe one of you guys know or are familiar with it. But it's a, it's a three-day thing. Potty training three days. Mm -hmm. But the, the deal is like you literally need three days of 100% by their side all day long because you, you keep them naked.
We did that, yeah. We so did you do naked, that? Yeah, you know? so you get, you keep them naked. It works. All day long. And as soon as they got to go, boom. Yeah. yeah. Any, they're going to make the first few times, they're going to definitely- You just got to camp out on a weekend and make it work. Yeah, right? try. Yeah. You can, I'm going to have- So I have those, uh, I don't know if you guys were at my house Potty before. Potty pads? We, well, no, we're going to lay this plastic. You can get at Home Depot, you can get this like clear the saran wrap. Screen, yeah. So we're going to I'm going to run it all over the carpet area. Yeah. And then we got a lot of tile in the house and stuff like that. And we're just going to keep them on the lower floor and just naked <laughs> for three days. And then- tr and Do so, the, the, the Cheerio, you know, in yeah, there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposedly- it's a, it's a, my buddy, both my buddies did it with their kids and said, yeah, after three, they went from not at all even close potty trained to full on potty trained after wow, three days. Wow, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And there's, of course, there's some, uh, you know, growing pains a little bit through different moments if they're scared or, you know, they're at a different place that you will, hurdles you'll have. But, yeah. but for the most part, like went on, went from not potty trained at all to full blown. Now, are you guys using the, are you going to use the, use the regular toilet or are you going to use like so the both? So we have, um, because the thing about the, the, the little, carry toilet the kid one is mm -hmm. sometimes the kid then it only will use that right so mm -hmm. then anywhere you go you so they have them. these other things so we just bought a bunch of stools to get up on the big boy toilet or whatever uh, yeah what you want to call it right <laughs> big boy. dad talk <laughs> hey do you, know you start doing that yeah you, should, you, know, it's, you know it's really embarrassing yeah. when you're with all adults or a business meeting and i go i gotta go pee pee real quick I'll be right yeah. <laughs> you gotta go did tinkle. i just say that yeah. Yeah. Like, i gotta go potty yeah, yeah. it's a big yeah. old business meeting and stuff like that i gotta go pee pee real quick oh yeah. my god dude uh, no, so we're going to get these uh, little, you know, stools or whatever to get up on the toilet. And then they have these inserts uh, that sit on the toilet. So yeah. they'll actually sit so on So it doesn't fall inside. Yeah, so it doesn't fall inside, right? <laughs> so we have both of those. And then, that, yeah, and then we have two bathrooms on the lower level. And then we'll we'll set that stuff up, saran wrap everything or whatever, and just oh, yeah. for three days keep them down there. So that's literally happening this week. So I'll be able to report back that's next great. week to see the success yeah, of it or not. Right now with, uh, with the baby, we have, we're doing this timer method where we do a timer to help encourage patients. So like, okay, we're gonna eat in one in two minutes and we'll do the timer and it's visual. And when he sees it, he'll he'll watch it. And you know what he did yesterday, this little turkey? He's eight months old. Yeah. We set the timer for him to eat because he gets too excited. He like he gets so antsy and anticipates eating and he wants to eat right away. And we're trying to teach him patience. You gotta wait. So we're like, okay, in two minutes we're gonna eat. So he's looking at it, looking at us, looking at, and he reaches over, I swear to God, he reaches over and turns the knob till it rings. And then he smiles like it's time to eat. <laughs> I'm like wow, you figured wow. that out. Yeah, he so, figured out how to make it go faster, so wow. it's time to eat. I it's can't it's it. interesting how quick they can actually start to learn even before they can speak themselves. Yep. Yep. Like we had, my Katrina was starting to get concerned. Right, we're at two years, and Max really isn't speaking. Like he says, "Daddy." And he, wow, he has a few things he's starting to, but yeah. not very many. Like right now, typically they say about now he can even put two words together. Yeah. And so he's kind of behind on that. And of course, like every parent I'm sure can relate is like, you know, anything that your kid is not right on pace for, you know. instantly start yeah. freaking yeah. out and stuff like that. It's actually not oh, that big of a deal. It's yes. not. No. In fact, they, the, uh, yeah, you know, Katrina spoke with a speech therapist yeah. and uh, was asking a bunch of questions and he really understands like he's he's actually really smart she's yeah. like oh my god he can he can tell the difference between that color and that color mm -hmm. and you could tell him to go get this and hand you that and he does all this. she's like oh he's he's gonna be just fine he goes she goes just some kids are they wait and she goes what it's gonna be like for your son probably is it'll go from like you guys never hear me and then all of a sudden yep it'll yep. go real fast yep. because because he understands everything he just hasn't figured out how to do it yeah, i have a friend's kid was mm -hmm. like that took yeah. forever and then just Tons of words. Yeah. Yeah. Because he not, totally, I could tell him so many things and he- Oh, he fully understands. You yeah. talk to him like he's, you know, a, yeah. a lot older. Yeah. So that's, yeah. I think that think yeah. that's really interesting. So I, I wanted to bring up a recent study that came out um, that was absolutely fascinating on exercise versus counseling or therapy mm. for well, you know, well-being, for mental health, uh, for anxiety, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I read that same study. Okay. Oh, so really? they took, they took- uh, a lot of women, I think it was like over a hundred women and they divided them into two groups and half of them, they put them in like group therapy counseling. Mm -hmm. Then the other half just exercised on a consistent, regular basis. Exercise outperformed counseling in terms of improving mental well-being. Wow. Over how long again? It was a 16, 16 weeks. week yeah, course. 16 weeks. Wow. Over 16, so four months, over a four month period, exercise outperformed group therapy counseling. now if you had to unpack that which is really I mean, interesting it's really to, to i mean we kind of know this but yeah. to have, see a study that actually says it outperforms 
therapy. I I've, would think I would, I would be impressed if it was. Yeah, which doesn't you. mean get rid of the therapy or like you know. Obviously, that's an integral part of the whole thing. But like to just focus on your body and phys be physically active and what the kind of response you get mentally from that was very right. This, this did, by no means does this discredit yeah, therapy. Yeah, no, in I'm, fact, I'm, I'm, it all really just is. That, it, yeah. All it does is highlight how incredible, how, how powerful uh, weight training. Now, what I want to hear yeah. from you guys is if you had to unpack it, like. What are the attributes that contribute to better well-being that much that a, a a trained psychologist or therapist that has tremendous value in helping you through these work through these things uh, actually doesn't outperform just yeah. somebody who follows a weight training program for sixteen weeks? Well, uh, to, to be clear, the, a perfect scenario would be to do both, right? And I've worked with 100%. lots of clients that have done both, and it's extremely effective and powerful. But here's why I think in this case, and I'm very careful to. What, how I word this, because previous studies have shown that for mild to moderate forms of depression, for example, which is the most common form of depression, that exercise is as good in the moderate length term and then probably better long term than antidepressants for helping with depression. Now, now, why would that be? Well, okay, the obvious is the physical benefit, right? So you're healthier, you feel better, hormones regulate, all these things affect your mood how you feel, mm -hmm. your inflammation is lower. But there's a very strong mental effect as well because people don't realize this, but when you exercise and you do it consistently, especially if you do it for the right reasons, it's one of the best uh, personal self-growth techniques you could ever uh, mm -hmm. go into. So people, when they think of like personal growth, they think of like, oh, I'm going to sign up for a course, or I'm going to go to one of those. I'm going to learn a language. Yeah, one of those, uh, you know, Robbins, uh, you know, weekends, Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins right. weekends. But exercise does this very, very well because the process of exercising is you challenge yourself. You see that, oh, I need to practice something over and over to get good at it. The feeling of accomplishment, the feeling of overcoming obstacles, the accepting what you can't do. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Like, I accept the fact that I can't, you know, run as fast as other people. Like, that's okay. Like, you go through this whole process of, of, of long-term exercise and all these things are personal growth, uh, you know, methods. And so that's what you get with exercise. It's not just about the physical health that you get, which plays a big role. It's the, me it's all the things you learn through doing it, especially if you go into it the right way, right? If you're going into it for the wrong reasons, it, it could do the opposite, but you go into it for the right reasons and you come out. Uh, well, it just proves to me how interconnected uh, physical activity is with, uh, you, you know, cognitive activity. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It also speaks to, I think, I don't know if we did a whole episode on this, or I know you went on a rant one time, just talked about all the um, the other benefits. Or like, I think we did. We did a yeah. single episode where it was like all the unknown benefits of, of weight training. Or they're like, I forget what the title was. Doug can probably look it up. But it was, that was literally it, was we went into all the things that you just wouldn't think about. Everybody knows gaining muscle, losing body fat, getting stronger. Those are all- the Dude, that's why it's so effective because yeah. you go into it not expecting yeah. personal growth. Like you go into it and you go, oh, I just want to get in better shape. And then you stay consistent. But And then what you get is like, oh, actually what I got out of this that's even more valuable is I accept my genetic limitations. I- I can overcome obstacles. I know yeah. practice makes perfect and discipline is important. And, you know, the, the camaraderie you may get from it's working hard. It's, you it's have objective to be too, right? Yep. So you, you see progress uh, objectively and you see this like actually happen versus like sometimes it's hard to see that. Uh, in, in other aspects of life. Right? That's what I, what I feel like the most you get out of is that you you really start to figure out what you put in is what you get out, right? Yeah. Or what you get out is what you put in. And, th like, and that, what, think about a lesson that is That's for what life. I mean, for life. is like, because it's not easy. No. And it's slow. It's a slow pr process. And it's hard. And you have disadvantages. And it's filled with failures and yeah. challenges. Absolutely. But, oh my God, when I stick this out and I stay consistent with it, I do feel the benefits. I do get some payback from it. It's incredibly empowering. So I would think, and when you talk about depression or mild depression, you got to think that's kind of one of the things is somebody in that state feels powerless yes. and feels weak and incapable of doing things. And I think just going through a 16 week program has got to yeah. overcome those major. It may hurdles. redirect a lot of the the chatter, in, you know, in your mind too. That you know, in, in fueling that into physical pursuits. So it's like it, sometimes it allows you to kind of break that perpetual loop that you get stuck. Yeah. In. Well, look, look at this. This is a study that Doug just brought up, showing that uh, aside from the the traditional real life improvements you get from being healthy. After two months of regular exercise, the people in the study also perform better 
on labor laboratory tests of self control. So you learn so many skills mm -hmm. through this pursuit of fitness that help you. And is self control a valuable lesson in modern society? I think that's the most important lesson because we're, we live in a society of so much abundance right. that you could literally go down so many dark paths of indulgence and in pretty much anything you want, food being the most, most common. problems, yeah, revolve around indulgence these days. Yeah. We also talk about the feedback loop from like posture too. I mean, think about that. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, it's always really obvious to us when we, I remember we meet a client and you, I could just tell they battle depression by how they walk up to me. To You could first, see it. Yeah, you could see the way they yes. walk, the way they hold their head, the way their, their shoulders are, are slouched forward. Like, it's really, really obvious. And man, you get that person working out for 16 Positive weeks. Feedback loop. Yeah. Chest is up, shoulders are back, yeah. head is out. And that feedback, it, it just it's, it speaks to it. Speaking of feeling better and mental health, um, I gave you, I love that Adam does this, by the way. He never questions me. <laughs> a I, just throw, trust. I just throw him a what, supplement. What did you do some with yeah, what did I No, I, so it's a new sponsor that we're working with. Not a new one that, we're, that we're, we know of. In fact, I've been taking Live On uh, supplements now for a long time. They give us free stuff all the time. But now we're going to be working with them. And so I threw you acetyl L carnitine. Yeah. Uh, and, and a thousand milligrams of essential phospholipids. Yeah. So they, no they, they, they put it together in oh, a delivery yes. system that really increases the, the absorption. And they have lots of different products glutathione, B complexes. It's so, like in its super concentrated form. I remember yeah. you giving this to me. Oh, yeah. Life. It's it's just, it's like they, they, it's like almost like they do it medically. Like yeah, this is right. it, the delivery is very important. So anyway. Acetyl L carnitine has been shown to improve mental states of well being in older individuals. Now, the reason why I take it is because uh, L carnitine, especially if you take it in a form that's absorbed properly, improves or increases, I should say, androgen receptor density. Okay, so what is that? The androgen receptors are what testosterone attached to. If you have more of these receptors, your normal levels of, levels of testosterone now become much more effective. In fact, studies show that it's androgen receptor density that better predicts how much muscle and strength you'll gain, not testosterone levels. Now, mm -hmm. why why would somebody like myself use the, their product? Because Here, here's the thing: being truthful, like it, it tastes terrible. Yeah. It really does. The people who there's use, no flavoring. The people who use this, I've seen, all the people <laughs> yeah. I know that use this product. Which, by the way, I know quite a few people. They're all the nerdy science guys like yourself yep. that I know that swear by this product because you see l-carnitine in uh, pre-workout mixes all the time yes. and post-workout shake stuff all the time yet i know that they are like the leaders i know like there's a they're, they're i know they're partnered up with some like medical companies and stuff like that that they're i know they're super reputable but what what is it about theirs that they can just say we're not even gonna we're not our focus is not going to be on wrapping it with sugar and making it taste good and trying to oversell it it's just the, all one about the, the delivery one of the big problems with taking anything orally is that it, you let's say you take a thousand milligrams of something you may only get 10 percent of it right or sometimes less uh you know for example in the case of magnesium mm. Certain forms of magnesium is just it acts like a laxative. You're not going right. to get absorbed any of it. They they have created a, a delivery system that has been shown medically to dramatically improve absorption and utilization. Mm -hmm. So what you find when you take it, it's like in a gel. Yeah. And these phospholipids uh, actually improve the the absorption of the acetyl L carnosine. So you'll get a higher amount of the total amount that's in the package. Yeah. And I notice a difference. This is why you see me squirting these in my mouth more than other you know products. Yeah. yeah. That are the same. So it's but yeah, it's it's an interesting interesting effect on androgen receptors. And now there's studies that show now that they, they compare men's with men with different testosterone levels and they compare their how they adapt to exercise. Like, do they build more muscle because they have more testosterone than this guy over here? And they found there wasn't really a big difference. But then they looked at androgen receptor density. That's what predicted. That's what predicted the muscle growth. Now, response. you were giving us a pair of these for a long time. It was a lot, well before we started even talking to them or working with them. And I don't remember what the two. You was a I was giving you this and glutathione. Okay. Now, glutathione has got a strong flavor. Very, very strong flavor. Yeah, that's that's the one that you're like, oh my God. That's rough. But glutathione. <laughs> it tastes like farts. Glutathione <laughs> is such. Just a, want to put it out there for the audience because this shit's the real deal. It's effective. And I know you will sell the science on how amazing the product is all day long. But if you're somebody who's like, oh, I'm going to try it. I bet it tastes hella good. Like, no. This is not Magic Spoon. This is not fucking Ned. This is yeah. not something that's a taste bubblegum flavored. Like you are literally taking it because it's supposed to be the best of the best yes. of this product. Yes. So glutathione uh, is a very, very strong antioxidant in the body. Very good for the liver and the immune system. In fact, uh, there's studies now that are being done on glutathione and COVID 
and its effect on getting people to to oh heal. Oh God! What do you, you get our our freaking episode flagged? Guy. I know. No, <laughs> there's studies. I said, I didn't make a claim. Look up the studies yourself. <laughs> yeah, so. and Talk. here's the warning. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Here's another cool study. They just did a study on theanine, the amino acid that I talk about to take with caffeine, mm -hmm. and THC. So THC obviously being the active, you know, psy the you know, psychoactive effect. Does it have a similar effect like with caffeine? No. What it does is it, it protects against the negatives of THC. So THC has some negative effects on the brain, especially if you take it consistently. And what you notice from that is like worse short-term memory, word recall. Mm -hmm. Taking theanine with it seems to have a very powerful protective effect. Now, is that the same as or Ooh. different mechanism as what happens when you do the one-to-one -one ratio with CBD? Because I know we've talked about this before too. CBD is different. It does, it does it through different. So if you want the perfect storm, I would go theanine, CBD, then THC all together. And it should protect against those potential negative effects that THC can produce when you do it on a consistent basis. Yeah, you've already, because you've taught me that. And I did notice a difference of that, by the way, when I- You don't start. get the memory effects. Like if I go too, too, too much THC for too long- I notice I'm not as sharp, uh, yeah. especially well, what, on the podcast. What I would do is I would I started after talking to you about it is I would I would buy cannabis that was a one to one ratio, and if I didn't have that, because many times I'll buy something that's very high THC, low CBD, then I would just take CBD capsules or like Ned product yeah. with it to try and kind of level it out. And I did notice a difference with that. So you're saying that you could add this on top of that? Totally. Too. Okay. Totally. So I'm gonna, I'm going to try it. I'm going to see what I notice. But the study was actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think this is going to be a big market because cannabis consumption is, is going, is, is it's becoming legalized. It's going up through the roof. And I predict that you're going to see the, these products that are effective to be used in conjunction with cannabis to explode because so, of their use. Speaking of your predictions, uh, you know, it seems that I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, pump your tires again on this topic. We've talked about this and I've already admitted that you were right or more right. I think than I was in this situation. That was the streaming. Mm. So I saw an article come out about Netflix and Grammys and they, I, I don't know if you guys knew this or not. They were like dominating the, the Grammys. Like Grammys the, or Emmys? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Grammys for music. Emmys is for oh. like TV. <laughs> obviously one of those, then, one yeah, of those awards. Obviously yeah. the Emmys. Isn't yeah. that, I wrote and then there's Grammys the Oscars. So, so terrible. Right. right. A whole nother One category. of those, those awards. Doug's <laughs> all into it. So he knows. <laughs> yes. I know. He's all over me on that. Like, that is who's going to get it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they were, they were dominating that. I don't know how many, I think for like the last three years they had like, they were like mopping up on all the awards or whatever. And that is now flipped to like a 60-40 split. And it's because HBO Max and Apple and like all these other streaming services now that are really starting to push their content. Netflix was so far ahead, they were kind of dominating yeah. that space. And it is starting to shape up as a very a la carte. And it will, maybe there will be room for several of these competitors to live amongst each other and that you won't see one or two of them gobble up all the small guys. There's enough mm -hmm. people consuming enough content where you can do very well, you know, catering to a particular, it's funny. We were, when we were in, in Kauai, I had forgot at one point we were driving, we had a rental car and I forgot my attachment, you know, the each, the whatever attachment for my phone into the car. Yeah. So I had to listen to the radio. So oh, we're listening to the oh radio Lord. and commercials come on. Right. And I haven't listened to the radio in a long time. There's like five minutes of commercials, and the commercials are these generic companies. They're trying to blast out. They don't really know who they're targeting. They know that they have pop music, so they know that a certain kind of person listens. Now, the commercials, first of all, on streaming services, first of all, shorter. I don't, you know, you don't, you never watch five minutes of commercials on YouTube, but they're very targeted. So even though they're shorter, yeah. They're much more effective because they're so specific and targeted. So this is what's going to end up happening. You're going to have so many more choices. Already we do, but you have even more choices for content and movies and streaming because now they can really narrow down who they're talking to. And Dude, speaking to. of yeah. that, Doug, did you? I know you are listening to Mark Randolph's "That Will Never Work" podcast. Yes. Are you current on all of them? Did you listen to all of them? I've probably listened to half of them. Did you listen to the one about the 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 guy who has a business that he works with all the biggest gaming companies in the world that, and they are working on engineering the psychology of of the mm. player. That's they they give them that feedback. So. They have been able to figure out this is this guy's business, brilliant like business for these reasons, for for advertising reasons in the future. So that is they are able to really, uh, I guess, cattle or categorize. I don't know how you profile. Want to, yeah, profile somebody 
by their gaming behaviors and habits. Wow. Mm -hmm. Does a guy in Call of Duty go and hide mm -hmm. for th for three hours mm -hmm. and not get in the middle of the wow. action? Yeah. Does a guy choose a sniper weapon all the time over like a hand pistol? Wow. Does yeah, and like what does that say about that person? Right. So they can engineer it to kind of cater to all these. So they uh, can tendencies. then give the feedback to yeah. someone like Epic Games and say, oh. 30% of your, your gamers uh, are this type of a profile. Uh -huh. Th and then, then you can now match it with advertising. Like, oh, these people that hide away and do these things will wow. like these. How freaking crazy that's, is that? Yeah. That's how that's how specific it is. I mean, I know, like, to your point, when I watch YouTube now, uh, I, I'll i get caught sometimes watching a commercial mm -hmm. because that first 15-second hook is something that I'm interested in. It's just like, oh, that was compelling I'm just let it roll and i'll watch yeah because it's they, they know your profile yeah they know the stuff that i'm into so they can advertise less and you get a free service but it's more effective for them it's a win 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 for everybody yeah and so they're moving this way in gaming on another level wow, with being able to break down the really psychology of the gamer who's wow. playing the game now, speaking of awesome products we have we we were going to mention another one of our sponsors you know my brother has been using the juve light now for a little while and he's been very, very consistent. And I could clearly see... Now, he's my brother, so it's like, yeah. am I going to tell him? you saw a little <laughs> bit of like hair growth. So he, he was using it on his head for yeah. a while. Oh. And he's getting some hair... Re he's, he's, he's the one in the family. Uh, between the two of us, he's most likely to go completely bald here yeah. in the next five years or whatever. But he was using it on his head. Yeah. Definitely worked. Definitely was regrowing hair. Now he's been using it on his face, and I've been seeing him in pictures because we talk, you know, through text or we'll do uh, FaceTime. He just had a baby right now, so yeah. we did a lot of FaceTime. And uh, you know, it's my brother, so I don't know how your relationship is with your brother, but sometimes like I, I, I want to tell him, "Man, your skin looks good." But I'm like, that's my brother. I don't have fucking <laughs> but dude, I've been looking, and so I told him, "I'm like, are you using it a filter?" You right the yeah, I, I'm like, are you using a filter on your face? He goes, "No." Why? I'm like, never mind, because and literally, I can see in his face. Yeah, yeah. His skin He's is like, looking. Oh, thank you. Yeah, You're dude. Noticing. Yeah, it's yeah. looking. So I asked him, like, have you been using? Because I gave him one. I had an extra one. I gave him one. Yeah. Have you been using the Juve Light like on your face a lot? And he goes, Oh yeah, every morning. So he's a stockbroker. So he'll wake up early in the morning yeah. and he'll check his charts and he's got graphs and all sort of weird shit. It's funny. It looks like the Matrix when he sends me stuff. He's like, dude, check this out. I'm like, can you explain it to me? I don't know what this <laughs> says. But anyway, when he's checking them, he has the lights on, one on his head, one on his face, and he does it every single morning. Now, I don't know if this is a stupid question, or not, but can can that actually set reset your circadian rhythm? Like, let's say you're somebody like a, like him who gets up really early, goes straight to the computer, doesn't know, go outside. Question. Is that a a you know? I, obviously, nothing beats going outside and being in the sun. But if it was, is that a, the the like how we talk about organifying green juice? Nothing beats going and getting the the real thing and right. eating your vegetables. Okay, and we'll always stand by that. But if you're not eating them or you don't have access or you're on the go, then supplementing with something like that is a the, the next ideal right. situation. Would you say that would be the same thing with like the juve light? If I'm not gonna get out in the sun, I. Didn't get out early this morning. I'm right on my computer working right away. It's so like as a supplement. <clears throat> yeah. That's a good question. I would assume so, but I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, that's, that's a, a really, really good question. Well, maybe, yeah, anybody that works indoors for a long time, I, I would assume that it's pretty beneficial for them. I would too. I, I was looking for Sal and maybe have him. I, I know I didn't set him up and tell him ahead of time, but I, I would like to know the science behind that because I know that a lot of the benefits from the Juve light come from the same benefits that you well, get I from the Well, I tell you sun. what, if there's a study that exists, it's on the Juve website and maybe Andrew- oh, yeah, can, they're really good about Maybe, yeah, they, yeah, maybe Andrew can, if, if it's there, it'll pop up here on the video. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, no, that's a really good idea. Hey, you want to know a funny brother story? Yeah. So Justin's brother comes into the studio yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Talk, talk he, about it. he asks if I'm Sal. What? <laughs> and, uh, no, because you and I look so much alike. Yeah. What? Yeah. So, yeah, you guys do. There's been 1,600 episodes, Yeah. and his brother hasn't listened to a single one. Not even one. Wow. Yeah. He so was let's in talk trash about him right he now. Was here, <laughs> he was in here doing work with you, and yeah. your brother has never listened to one episode? He has Not no one. idea who we are. He, he always, like, compliment, but the thing is, he's very congratulatory, and he, like, you know, loves to see that, uh, you know, we're successful. And Fuck whatnot. that. But I just, I feel like, I feel you, dude. Like, I just feel like, I, I mean, you're saying what I, what nah, I think fuck in my that. head. But, I just feel you know, like I would be so different. Like my sister, bro. especially the level that we've reached. I'm sorry, but like, I get it. If it's like, there's a competitive element. hundred percent. Listen, my, my, my brother-in-law. Okay. My brother-in-law is on episode like 23 mm -hmm. of his podcast. My best friend has got a golf one. Okay. That he does. 
I've listened to almost all of my brother-in-laws, at least half, if not three quarters of my buddies. Right. I guarantee my day is as filled. You'd be, you'd be a great brother, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> I'm not looking for you to pump. My, my point is that I'm just curious, and I yeah. and I want to see them do well, and I and I also want to be able to give them any feedback I can to help. It's more them. common what in Justin's scenario than not. Oh, there's I know. A, there's a saying, I have family right? and friend the same way. Yeah, what's the saying? It's the you hardest. never be a prophet in your own in your own town or whatever. Yeah, is that what like it is. Well, I mean, yeah. it took. It's, it's, hard, it's long, hard to be a prophet in your own town. Look how long it took for, for my wife to listen. You know, so it's yeah. just one of those things, dude. Like I. It doesn't even bother me because that's how it's always been with everything I've done. Like, I just, I'm like, I'm just, I put my head down and I'm going my own direction. So it's like, you either, you either like pay attention or you don't. It really doesn't bother me. Well, now th I do understand the people, which I do have some friends that did this and I did, I do not blame them because I, I sent over to you guys last night. I was on YouTube. I was going down a rabbit hole. And for some reason, our very first episode with Craig Caperso at my mother-in-law's house, right? The very, very first one we I ever recorded. I couldn't, I couldn't watch it. Popped up, and I, <laughs> I clicked on it and watched like the first eight minutes of it. Bye. And Testosterone levels in men has been dropping consistently across all age groups since, 19, since the 1950s. And in fact, um, just from 1987 till today, we've noticed a uh, almost a 12 percent or 15 percent decrease in testosterone levels in men. Oh my God, is it bad? I right. mean, it is. And so, if you listen to us early on and you're a fr family friend or whatever like that, and you're because I've had people tell me like, yeah, I've heard some, yeah, it's gay, hey, good job, but you know, not really my thing. Totally get that. Yeah. Totally get the the way we were presenting information early on. But I will say we were. I mean, right, early you were. On. You came out. So that episode one, you were talking about uh, the decline of testosterone mm. in our society. Mm -hmm. um, I introduced to the audience BFR training. It was before anyone had done it yet, and you asked me about it, and uh, we broke down BFR training. Or and, and there wasn't enough research behind it yet for me to. to and, and it sounds stupid. It sounds really ridiculous when you think about it. And uh, is uh, kind of almost contradicting to how we would train. So right. I need the contradictory uh, item in a minute. Yeah. Ahead. So, <laughs> um, so anyways, so I guess there are a little bit of nuggets that had to been in there that people found value. Of we because, sucked less than other people. Is how we, so I think how we started, yeah. <laughs> at oh, the time, seven years yeah, ago, the scale right? of suck. Oh, yeah, dude, I don't know why my default sucky. when I get nervous really is boobies and sexual things. And I mean that, I mean, God, we went just, wild. I mean, we were trying yeah. to figure it out. I don't think you know, I could have sounded line. more douchey on there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Great. Now awesome. people are going to try and find that. No, you can't. I think it's bare. Mm. I think only our private forum has actually seen that okay. video. We haven't shared with anybody else. Thank God. Hey, real quick. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Go check out LMNT products. Uh, so this is at drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. This is electrolytes done right. So it's got the right amount of sodium to fuel your workouts, fuel your pumps, and your energy. So it's not just sprinkled in there. It's the right dose. Ladies and gentlemen, this stuff actually works. My pumps are incredible when I use LMNT during my workouts. Now, if you go to that site, drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump, you will get free sample packs. All you have to do is pay for shipping. All right. Enjoy the rest of this podcast. Our first caller is Tom from New Jersey. Hey, what's up, Tom? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on guys? Um, long short of it is, um, I, uh, Lost over 150 pounds naturally. Um, went from 420 yeah. down to the uh, 270s. Um, kept it off over the course of three years. Um, was with a trainer till about six months ago. Um, got certified myself, really trying to take it to the next level. Nice. Um, big thing is I've kind of plateaued. And I just really want to keep burning, really want to put on some more mass. Um, it's tough with the all-natural thing, but uh want to see what you guys say about possibly – taking it to the next level, what program I could maybe go on and, you know, any, you know, hurdles you could help me face. Yeah. I, no. I have some questions around the, the cut. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, first off, I want to commend you on your right. Adam haircut. That's a really nice, uh, <laughs> yeah, you got the style going has he on. Got, has he got my look or what? Oh, he's got your look. Dude. Uh, he must be handsome as fuck. Dude. It's super so, handsome. Yeah. All right. So Aer aerodynamic. No, I, so I, yeah, the questions I have, um, I kind of want to know how you got, got down. Right. So, did you do it mostly through weight training and diet? Did you utilize a lot of cardio? Do you have any idea of where your calorie intake is right now? And then the last question is, have you been on a, a bulk yet? Okay. Um, 
it started through light training. Um, I was an athlete back in high school um, and out um, into my mid twenties until I changed. Um, so I had knowledge of that. I uh, incorporated light training again. Um, I have a very bad knee. I have no cartilage left in it. So I'm working with that. But uh, it was mainly strength training and very light cardio. And then it got to the point where I built up from two days a week to three days a week to, you know, five to six days a week. Um, I, uh, I have not gone on a bulk. I'm very scared about putting anything on. Um, it's trying to break that mindset. Um, and the, the other thing is I'm probably around 3,400 calories right now. <clears throat> okay. So this is a, we're in a good place, bro. 3,400 yeah. calories, lost so much weight and you haven't done a bulk yet. Um, and that is going to be this conversation from, I'm sure from all three guys are going to be the same thing as far as the mindset is going to be the, the, the greatest hurdle that we have right now, which is, I, and I totally get this because uh, I've trained many clients uh, in a very, very similar situation as, as yourself. And I do know that, you know, when you're coming from there, just the thought of, oh my God, what if I start a bulk and I see the scale go up 10 pounds or even 15 pounds or anywhere in that direction after all this hard work. But the truth is, uh, that's why you've plateaued right now. You've plateaued right now because your body is completely adapted to the caloric intake, the activity level that you're doing. Your best bet right now is let's put on some muscle. And in order to put on more muscle than you already have done and already have right now, we are going to require increasing our caloric intake and then putting you on a muscle building type of program. I would recommend based off of listening to what you're kind of doing right now, probably a MAPS anabolic type of program. Uh, okay. That's the direction I would go. I'm curious to hear what the guys would say, but I'm sure they're going to say the same thing as far as the mental hurdle. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree 100%. Uh, I think MAPS anabolic, three foundational workouts mm -hmm. a week because you have the choice in the program to do two or three. I would mm -hmm. say do three. Make sure you do your three trigger sessions on all of your off days. And then what I would add to that, because you mentioned your knee, is I would add uh, MAPS Prime Pro to work on hip, ankle, and foot mobility to take pressure off uh, the knee. And you know, be very careful with your lower body exercises. Don't worry so much about going real heavy. Work within uh, your limits. But mm -hmm. you're in a really good position. I mean, based off of what you said, you lost weight the right way. And you're at 3,400 calories, you're still at a pretty good number. You're crushing. Now, a bulk is just a little bit more than that. You don't got to do an aggressive bulk. In fact, I would recommend against doing an aggressive bulk, especially if in the past your tendency was to overeat. So mm -hmm. all you got to, I would add, you know, 300 calories, uh, 400 calories max, probably around mm -hmm. 300, and just yeah. let your body slowly get stronger, build some muscle. Do it over the course of the, the MAPS anabolic program, about three months. Keep it kind of slow. You can throw in yeah. a couple days a week of low calories if you feel like you're putting on body fat. And then just do that and then see where you're at at the end of that. I think you'd be surprised how much body fat you may actually lose, believe it or not, by following that kind of a protocol. Cool. Cool. I, I also, you, we definitely want to, even though our ultimate goal probably is to get down to a lower body fat percentage and continue to lean out. Like you said, the goal though now mentally is to focus on strength because, mm -hmm. because what you don't want to do is to take the advice we said and you go, okay, the guy said add three, 400 calories a day. I'm doing that. And the thing you're watching is the scale. You mm -hmm. got to just, that needs to go to the side for a while. Don't worry about your exact weight right now. Eat like, a, eat like Sal saying, three to 400 extra calories a day, follow MAPS anabolic three times a week. That doesn't mean that the other, because you've worked up to five five to six days a week of activity, still go for a walk, still mm. still do things. And you to, get the trigger sessions. Yeah, trigger sessions and still do like a mobility from Prime Pro. So that's what I would do to supplement maybe the all the activity that you're doing currently now, since we're telling you to reduce to three days a week of full body routine but still do activity, still work on mobility, still do the trigger sessions on the off day. So you're still going to be moving around, doing stuff five to six days a week, just training. And then the mentality is around building strength. So let that be your guide on, am I doing a good job? Am I get, getting stronger week over week right. following the program? And then we can assess at the end of it uh, where you're at. Yeah. Strength is your gauge. How like uh, to energy levels. So like, I don't know how energetic you feel right now at what, 3,400 calories, but uh, you know, that's something to really pay attention to and just gradually 
increase that based on like uh, how that's going to help aid you in your, uh, you know, performance in the gym, uh, very much of a, a strength focus there in the gym. Yeah. You know, Tom, I, I had a client, you remind me a lot of a person I trained a long time ago and we did exactly what we're talking about. And he was really good at following, you know, what I said to a T and it was remarkable at the end of three months, we gained muscle and actually his body fat percentage went down a little bit. Now, I think what happened is his body fat total weight didn't change, but because he gained lean body mass, his overall body fat weight became a smaller percentage of his body weight, if that makes any sense. So we actually saw his muscle go up and his body fat percentage go down. Then when we went to start to cut, it was like his body responded again. There's this theory. I remember Jason Phillips uh, and I talked about this on a previous old podcast where we we think, and, and other people have talked about this, where the central nervous system kind of has this memory of you know how you lived before, what you did before, and so it's a little bit more resistant. It's a little bit more resistant to getting lean or you know getting yourself to where you want to go. So you kind of have to let your body know it's okay. A surplus, a calorie surplus in your situation, especially when you're sending the signal to build, may do that, and it may take a few months, but I think you'll be happy uh, with the results. Do you have MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Prime Pro, by the way? No, no. I was waiting to see what you guys would say before I made any moves. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to give them to you, so you, you got those for oh, free. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah, so you start off with what we're giving you right now. That should take care of you for the next three months. If we don't touch bases between now and then, the ideal order for someone like you is MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, then MAPS Aesthetic. We wrote them in that order to help first build the metabolism, build a strength base, then move into kind of performance-based stuff, and then eventually into aesthetic. So if you do not make contact with any of us between now and the end of three months, that would be the next progression for you. But I would love to hear back from you. I'd love yeah. to hear how you're doing after a month or two and stay strong. It's going to be the, the mental game is going to be everything for you. Yeah. yeah figure out, Definitely. yeah. Figure out your rituals in terms of like, uh, you know, pr protecting that ankle mm -hmm. to, or that knee, excuse me, uh, mm -hmm. work on the ankle, work on the hips and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, really dial that in. It's going to help a lot. Awesome. But if, uh, if I could just say to you guys real quick, I appreciate everything you guys do. And especially the other day on one of your podcasts, um, talk about Sal's awesome video. Awesome. By the way, thank you. Um, you guys, something that I must respect and appreciate is people like me who are tr trying to find where they fit in the fitness industry and the fitness, you know, world by you guys, you know, not just selling your bodies and stuff to push stuff and letting, you know, the information speak. It really makes it comfortable for people like me in that situation to come on here and talk to you guys about it. So I really appreciate that. And I love that you guys do everything the way you do it. So thank you. Hey, oh, yeah. that's your, awesome, your feedback means a lot. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you, for Tom. Calling. Thank you guys. No problem. You right. know, I had a I had a trainer years ago um, that I recruited from Foot Locker. So, you know, they sell shoes, right? I was at the mall, and this dude is selling me shoes, and he's super charismatic, super personable. And we started talking. He asked me what I did. I said, oh, I managed the gym, you know, down the street. And he says, oh, you know, I've been working out now for a while. I lost 100 pounds. Now, he probably still needed to lose 30 or 40 pounds, but he'd lost 100 pounds. Very similar story to this guy. And I said, you want to you want to get into fitness? I think you'd make a great trainer. You just yeah. got to get certified. Anyway, he ended up working for me, became a trainer, and actually did very well because yeah. he'd gone through the journey recently. People connected with him, and he made an excellent uh, trainer. I work with somebody very similar, and they, they just become this evangelist of fitness, and it's yes. just like they did very well in, well, in the business. The, this is uh, one of my favorite clients to help because – this is li you, you literally change this person's life. Yes. Yeah. Somebody who's been walking around at four bills plus for a good amount of their life, right? So it's not like this happened overnight for him. Mm -hmm. um, and you drop, you know, 150, 200 pounds down on this person and get them excited about the fitness and how, and, and when they do it the right way like this, right? He didn't do obsessive amounts of cardio and cut down to 1500 calories. He's in a pretty healthy calorie and it, he should be a little bit higher. Just so you, the audience is listening, like I think he's 270, right? Still. Yeah. So 270 person that who's, who's lifting training five days a week easily could be around 4,000, 4,500 calories in a good, in a good place. Right. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. he's got plenty of room to still go up and still be in, I think a really good place. And that's the goal for me. If I, he was a long-term client is I would say, okay, we're going to go in and out of this bulking and then back to cutting and then back to bulking until I can move you up to about 45, 4,700 calories. That would be the kind of the goal would be to run a bulk for a while, 
get, increase those calories, then I'd reduce for a little while, then go back to a bulk. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate goal is building strength. I don't actually give a shit if the scale doesn't move right now. Like if we hover right around that 270. That's ideal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to hover right around that 270, mm -hmm. give or take a few pounds, and actually get him up to eating 4,500 calories. Because then if I go, okay... Now we're at 4,500 calories. We've maintained 270 pounds. What I know for sure has happened is there's been a nice even exchange. You've probably added 5 to 10 pounds of muscle, lost 5 to 10 pounds of fat. So you're a leaner, stronger, bet faster metabolism version of yourself. Now let's go down to your 3,500 and watch what happens. Yeah, and that melts off your body. Yes. Our next caller is Craig from California. Hey, what's up, Craig? How can we help you? Hey, gentlemen. How are you guys? It's great to hear you. Good. Yeah. Um, over, you know, 20 years ago, I'm 48, over 20 years ago, I lost uh, over 100 pounds through like running, lifting weights and eating correctly. And then that eating correctly kind of turned more into a uh, orthorexia eating pattern. And then uh, I also suffer from body dysmorphia. Now that I'm 48, I kind of want to focus on getting bigger and stronger. Obviously, I have a six-year-old daughter and I need to... Uh, discourage your suitors by mm -hmm. having some size on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go flare that chest. Uh, exactly. And I'd like to look like Sal and a wife beater too, but I know that's impossible. Mm, so yeah. um, nobody can attain that. But, my, <laughs> but the two things that hold me back, I, uh, when I lift heavy, my joints start to hurt. Mm. And then my mind will just not let me eat enough calories to put on size. So how would you guys go about attacking those situation are, are you currently following any of the maps programs right now uh no i had uh aesthetics just because i was more into aesthetics um i was thinking about getting strong um but i just haven't got around to pulling the trigger yet no. yeah what you're asking is a really really uh good question um it, there's a lot it, this is quite common not specifically what you're saying but it's quite common for people to fear going in one direction or another. You know, the, the person that was always skinny at one point may fear trying to get leaner and then vice versa, the person that dealt with maybe being overweight, having trouble with trying to bulk or build muscle. Orthorexia, by the way, or orthorexic type eating for the listener is this obsession with healthy eating. So it's a dysfunctional form of eating, but rather than restricting calories too much, like you would find with maybe anorexia or reverse anorexia, which is you're always stuffing yourself. Extremely prevalent in the bodybuilding Yes, community. it's yeah. like you're, It's like everything has to be super healthy, structured, and perfect. And it can cause a lot of stress, um, and it can make eating um, a chore or stress on, on the person's uh, psyche. Um, and it is quite common. So here's how I always tackle this with clients, is I take the focus entirely off of aesthetics. I take the focus entirely off of the scale. So what I would say to you is I would take your scale and I would throw it in the closet or throw it away or put it in the garage. Don't weigh yourself at all. Also, don't don't flex in the mirror or sit and study your body in the mirror. Now, it's okay to look at yourself, of course, but try to avoid analyzing yourself and your body and the way it looks. First off, the way you perceive yourself can be a total lie, as evidenced by the times that I'm sure you've looked at pictures of yourself and said, wow, I look pretty good. But I remember at the time, I felt like I looked really bad. This happens to a lot of us. So I would avoid those things and focus entirely on performance, strength, right. stamina, mobility. Now, the second part of your question was the joint pain. When I lift heavy, my joints start to hurt. You can create more tension without adding weight on the body. So going heavy doesn't necessarily mean adding weight to the bar. It could mean slowing down. It can mean creating more intrinsic tension on the body. You know, I could, if I want to just push heavy weight, for example, and let's say I'm doing a, I don't know, an incline dumbbell press. I might grab, I might grab the 100 pound dumbbells and try to push them hard. I could get an equally challenging workout with 50 pound dumbbells if I try to make it harder myself intrinsically by slowing down, focusing on the squeeze, and literally the goal is, can I make this 50 pounds? feel like a hundred pounds. That's what I would recommend to someone like you. Rather than trying to add weight to the bar, can you make the weight feel heavier with your technique, form, and concentration? Your body doesn't really know the difference. Well, let's get into programming. I mean, what are you, uh, what are you leaning towards with him? I mean, the first thing that comes to mind for me would be anabolic. I asked a question too about if you were following one currently, because typically um, 
when my joints start talking to me, it's when I when I'm actually not doing what I should be doing. It's when I'm overreaching and I'm like lifting too heavy too often, yeah. mm-hmm. and my programming is off. Uh, which even as long as we've been doing this, uh, all of us have still a tendency to do this. So. I think following something like a MAPS anabolic protocol um, is ideal for you. The other program I may I could be convinced p- potentially by the other two guys to go is powerlift. Yeah, I actually think because that's kind of the direction I was going. But Sal brings up a point about you know joint pain, uh, and that was something where I was like, okay, well maybe even performance yeah. because it's not uh, specifically focused on uh, you know hypertrophy and and, and uh, you know really like a physique type driven aesthetic. Uh, focus. Focus. So it's it's very much driven towards you know your movement quality, your your overall strength, uh, and, and to it's addressing joint issues too uh, at the same time with the mobility sessions. So I think, in my opinion, I think uh, you know Maps Performance is probably you know the best because it's going to really shake up your mentality that you've been uh, driving so far. I agree, hundred percent. Maps Performance is perfect, and focus again. On can I make, if you're in a phase where it's low reps, like phase one and mass performance, for example, rather than as you feel yourself getting stronger thinking, oh, I think I can add 10 pounds, think to yourself, can I make the same reps I did last week feel harder? And how do I do that? Slower, squeeze, concentrate, technique, intrinsic tension. I mean, these are, I tell you what, if you look at some of the most successful bodybuilders uh, who've been training for decades who compete into their 40s and 50s, what they do is that exactly. They'll use a light weight, but you can, when you watch them work out, like Vince Taylor was really good at this. It was, can I make this weight feel heavier? And it's a very effective technique, especially for longevity. It really reduces the risk of injury. And you're, again, your muscles really don't know the difference. Your body doesn't know the difference if you do it that way. So if we're if we're going to lean towards performance, which I can totally get behind it for the reasons that you guys said, um, I'm actually even going to, and I, I know we normally would say, oh, focus on strength. and get. I'm actually going to say I wouldn't even worry too much about more weight going on the bar because right. there's still weight. Technique. Yeah, technique. That, ex, that, that program, uh, you're going to do exercises you've probably never done before. Mm-hmm. And instead of when you feel like you're getting better at it, trying to add weight, um, I would be very meticulous about my movements. Can I make this even prettier? Like, there's some stability components in there, some multi-planar mm-hmm. movements in there. So when I'm doing these exercises that are challenging and unique that I've never done them before, and just because I've got a couple weeks in and I start doing them better, I wouldn't start adding load. I would actually just slow down, like the guy said, and try and make the my form perfect. I think that with the mobility yeah. sessions uh, in between the foundational days are going to benefit you tremendously. Yeah. Now, one more thing, Craig, just to help you out with this, because I know uh, when you do this process and you say, okay, I'm not going to weigh myself. I'm not going to flex in the mirror. When can I flex in the mirror? When can I check on my aesthetic performance? Do this, right? Follow MAPS performance. It'll give you about three months. In that three-month period, do what I'm talking about. At the end of three months, I want you to go ahead and flex, look in the mirror, weigh yourself. And I would bet you money that you'll be surprised yep. at the changes in your aesthetics at the end of three months. But the three-month period will at least allow you to break those chains a little bit. Now, when it comes to diet, it's the same thing. I want you to judge your diet based on your performance. So, oh, I'm not feeling as strong. Maybe I need more carbohydrates. Maybe I need more proteins. Or I'm feeling kind of sluggish. Maybe I overate or my digestion's a little off. So look at your food rather than from an aesthetic standpoint, look at it from a performance standpoint. Oh, I could tell a difference in my performance based on how I ate yesterday or my digestion feels real good or my inflammation. You know, you talk about your, your joints, this, you know, uh, th- you would encourage you to eat more well-cooked leafy greens, olive oil, fish. Um, you could also try supplementing with something called bromelain. You could take this a few times a day on an empty stomach. It's a very good natural anti-inflammatory. So uh, give that a shot, but take it on an empty stomach. Otherwise, if you take it with food, it acts more like a digestive enzyme, but give it three months. And even this might make it even more fun for you. Take a picture before of yourself, front, side, back, and then don't do shit in terms of looking at yourself and taking pictures until the end of three months where all you did was focus on performance. And I think you'll be pretty surprised. It's a nice byproduct. Yeah. By the way, do you have MAPS performance? No, I don't. Okay. We're going to send, we'll send that over to you. Oh, man, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A thousand times, thank you. No problem, man. Good luck with that. So, Keep us posted. Uh, can I take it? 
Can I take a second to thank you guys? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Okay, so we lost our daughter seven years ago, and then my wife was battling cancer, and I found you guys in like 2016. Mm. And honestly, going back and listening to every, I've listened to every single episode. I, that's not hyperbole. I've listened to every single episode because I just needed a distraction from life, and your guys' banter and wit was so, so helpful in getting through a tough time. So, and you guys ruined every other podcast for me, but <laughs> yeah. I can't listen to them now because you guys are so good. But I just want to thank you guys for everything you've done for just me in general. Hey man, God wow. bless you. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm glad we could, we, you could find value in our, our podcast. What a huge compliment, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you guys. I appreciate it. All right, brother. God, bro, today's gonna give me all teary eyed and emotional I today. Know. Jesus, man. I know. You know, uh, it's that one um, got me a bit. I tell you what, um, fitness, of course, it's a tool like anything, so it can be abused, but when it's used the right way, because it's such a personal growth um, and present, you know, method of being present, it really can be uh, an effective tool during challenging times. I do, not that it's a cure for anything, of course. But boy, does it uh, can it be very useful. So mm -hmm. I, I appreciate him saying that. I mean, I think the the the, the reasons why we do what we do is to really uh, help people in, in real way. So well, yeah. these these are the people that, and you know, God gets me all emotional talking to both these back to back questions here that we got because this is who I really feel like we were thinking about when we thought about this podcast, right? When we looked at the landscape on social yeah. media and in podcasting, you know, a lot of a lot of fitness people were talking to other fitness people or other people yeah. that um, were like them. And there was this huge majority of normal ass people that have shit that happens in their life. And, you know, their fitness goes to hell for a while because other major things happen and they are just trying to get back to feeling good. And those were the clients that I remember training and helping. And the conversation is so different than what I see all over the place. It's not... This, this shit about, uh, you know, breaking down the, the latest study on what, what modality is better or macro counting or the, the yeah. latest and greatest it's tool. All irrelevant. Yeah, it's all irrelevant. And, and these are the people, man, you help, you help these people out and it's life changing. So man, what a, what a cool, uh, what a cool person to talk. Both these, these back to back that we, we just had have been phenomenal. And, you know, talk a little bit about the orthorexic or orthorexia that, uh, he mentioned, like this is. Uh, really, really common in the the bodybuilding it's space. Super prevalent in fitness. I, yeah, I didn't. I and I didn't know that until until I got into it as heavy as I did with the competing. And man, um, it, it's these people that a lot of the uh, that we idolize and that are on magazine covers and we look up to and mm -hmm. aspire to be like. Many people have no idea that you know because they're sitting at this in the place of these two people right over 100 pounds overweight feel terrible so that and they look at this perfect body and this guy yep. who's got all great hair and it's you know he loves to exercise every day and they think they got it all together and what they don't realize is they're broken as fuck too they're hella broken that you just but just because they look good on the outside they they're they're there's missing out on a lot of life because they can't go fucking two hours without checking themselves in the mirror or weighing their food or well, figuring out what the next meal is going to be. Right? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. It's a front, and you know we've seen that, and that's been our biggest uh, motivation is to really just reconnect with people and show them that you know there's a way to do this in a healthy manner, and you can still attain a lot of really impressive. Uh, you, you know, goals that you set yourself out towards, but uh, doing it in a healthy way is everything. Our next caller is Taylor from Kansas. Hi, Taylor. How can we help you? Yeah. So I guess in a nutshell, I have been lifting for a while now, have run several of your guys' programs and um, I'm getting a lot of like upper back pain, like knots in between my shoulder blades. And so from what I've heard you guys say, I feel like that's... Um, like some movement pattern issues. So really my question is like, do you think I should run prime and try to work on like priming before I work out and get those movement patterns better while I'm working out? Or should I run prime pro and like correct forward shoulder or whatever it might be that's causing those knots and yeah. problems like that? The answer to that is yes. So yeah. in other words, <laughs> in other words, do both. Yeah. That, would, that would be your best okay. bet. I would also go light uh, on your pressing exercises, overhead pressing, forward pressing. 
And I would even mm-hmm. go light on your uh, your pull down and rowing movement. So in, o- in other words, focus really, really heavily on technique, perfect form while you're okay. doing the priming, while you're doing the correctional exercise. It looks mm-hmm. like there's a bit of a, maybe some overcompensation or movement pattern issues. And so these muscles are just tight because they're they're protecting. You know, oftentimes when we have muscles that are really tight, uh, what, what it is, it's really a signal from the body because the body's trying to protect something. Mm-hmm. So it, mm-hmm. it feels unstable right, there or maybe an instability under that. Yeah. Somewhere. And so it's just, it's these muscles are just kind of constantly flexing a little bit in order mm-hmm. to protect a potential issue. So in order for them to go away, you're going to have to correct that issue. Now in between, I would recommend, uh, either massage or foam rolling of those areas because pressure on tight areas will temporarily get them to relax. Not a permanent fix, but in combination with what I just said, it's a really, really good uh, combination. Taylor, is it um, on one side more than the other on your back, or is it you know right down the middle or on both sides? Where, where do you feel it mostly? Yeah, mostly on my left side, okay. like under that left shoulder blade. Okay, so mm. what's common when it's on one side or the other like that, and, and maybe you can video yourself while you're doing some movements like bench pressing or rowing when you are, and and see if that left side is the shoulders rolling forward or you're getting kind mm-hmm. of like a like it's a or elevated. yeah elevating yeah. where it'll kind of come up a little bit more than the right side and and or roll mm-hmm. forward. Uh, that might be what what's causing that imbalance back there, uh, and then I believe uh, I believe Kelly Starrett did a really good video on a uh, lacrosse ball like release before you get into lifting. When you have this, have you seen that before, Justin? Mm-hmm. It takes I think, uh, and maybe Andrew can do a clip of this, or maybe we can shoot it ourselves. Uh, but he takes like two lacrosse balls, tapes them together, and then he puts them right back there. And then you kind of, you take your arm all the way above your head. Similar uh, movement is like what you would be doing for like your wall circles that uh-huh. you teach, Justin, like yeah. that. Um, yeah, you do some so you're scapular getting, you're circles getting, with, with pressure. Yeah, yeah, so you're getting scapular uh, kind of, it's, you know, it's a, it's moving abducting, it's yeah. elevating all while being, the lacrosse yeah. balls are pushing. Yeah. Think about the, the function of your scapula too. So you want to kind of take it, you want to elevate it, you want to, you know, retract it, you want to depress it. It, and then you want to bring it forward too. So, you know, just like getting it to articulate through, you know, all those different movements, uh, you know, is going to help a lot. So you can identify kind of where, you know, there may be some dysfunction. Another uh, and a good way to test when you're getting good at that is, and Justin, you, I'm I keep leaning on you for the mobility stuff to remind me the names. It's or all good. What is that where, you know, someone does like a dead hang and then you do that with your, your scapula? Yeah, it's hanging scapular circles. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Do we have that? Is that in the program or no? Um, I don't think it is in the program. No, but we've shot video. Yeah. You might want to do that with a, a lat pull down bar because it can be really hard it's, for someone it's pretty to, tough it's, yeah uh, no so that's me i'm what i'm explaining to her that should be your goal oh, I see. oh right yeah to so if, that, yeah. yeah if you can obtain okay. uh, obtain okay. that uh so and again maybe i can have Andrew. i'm putting a lot of work on andrew today maybe he can find a clip of that and or maybe justin could do that because i don't even well, think i could do even that just well. starting by hanging on a bar too uh, it, and then really trying to just connect and, and, and sort of like depress those shoulders and then come back up. And so you get, you get a little bit of that like retraction and depression, just, uh, you know, just focusing just on that to get kind of contraction there and, and response out of, you know, your shoulder blades, I think is, is a good start. So Taylor, if you don't have prime and prime pro, we'll send those to you. And so here's what you're going to do. Okay. You're going to, pr- you're going to prime before your workouts your workouts are going to be your workouts are going to be lighter and you're going to just be focusing on perfect form and then on the days in between you're going to use prime pro to work on your shoulder your shoulder blade and the thoracic area so you'll pick like two or three movements and do 10 minutes two or three times a day on the off days and then give yourself some time in my experience dysfunction dealing with the mm-hmm. scapula can take it can be hard mm-hmm. to correct yeah. because you can't see it right. it's hard to look at the scapula okay. obviously while okay. you're working it but be patient when it'll it'll happen if you're consistent would you guys i mean i i see that she has almost all the other programs i i'm leaning towards performance is that where you guys would drive her right now oh yeah maps yeah. performance with prime and prime pro would be great that would be a good combo that's my favorite. <laughs> oh, Excellent. Good, right? good. Excellent. Yeah. And you look like you work out too. I can see it from uh, where I'm sitting over here. So good job uh, right. selling our programs there. There it is. <laughs> Billboard. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you guys so much. No problem. Have a good one. You, you too. too. You know, it's funny. Uh, and I, I didn't want to say this to her. So I want to discourage her. The hardest imbalances I've ever had to correct in clients have to do with the shoulder blade. Oh, yeah. 
it's like the hardest most because it's you can't it's see behind it. you yeah it, like it, it just sort of has a mind of its own it feels like because you can't like really connect to it sometimes yeah people just don't have a connection to it anyway like uh, winging scapular winging oh do you to think, do you that, think so. that's because it's it's an, an area of your body that there isn't a lot of movement and range of motion as far there's a lot of movement as far as how often it does but as far as the distance it travels like right you most other joints you can take it through a fuller range of motion when you're talking about moving the scapula it's and you're a, more aware of what's going on because you can see yeah, your limbs yeah like i can move my leg and my ankle and my sh you know shoulder i can see what i'm doing but like try to abduct depress elevate you know roll forward your scapula well mm -hmm. this is also what remember that the little debate we went back and forth not that long ago about Lat spread yes oh yeah yeah that's why it's so hard you oh, know, yeah. because people don't know how to that's what you're doing when you when you do a lat spread so mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I like Maps performance for her. Uh, super common though that you see this. That's why I asked her if it was on left or right. Um, this was an area for me. A lot of times I would I would roll forward on one side, the side that I you know write with and I eat with, like because everything's forward on that mm -hmm. side more. Right. Uh, then I would get those knots back there. I also would another thing you can tell for the the, the men that are listening that may uh, suffer from this also is it's really easy for you to tell a, a discrepancy in left or right of your your pec. Mm -hmm. So normally one side of the chest will develop more because when you're doing like a bench press, that's that bad side will roll forward right. and it gets more shoulder and tricep versus working the pec, and you'll have this kind of imbalanced chest. So if you're somebody who's listening and you have an imbalance on your chest like that, meaning one side's bigger than the other, uh, many times. Times, this is part of the reason why our next caller is chase from kansas chase what's happening man how can we help you hey guys so uh i found you guys recently i started lifting again after a long hiatus since high school um joined for the fitness stayed for the entertainment um so i appreciate all you guys do um i was a i was an athlete in high school i played rugby year round played football um ended up hurting my knees my senior year kind of kicked me off the athlete stuff um, I met a girl in college. We had a kid. Um, I put on a whole lot of uh, sympathy weight during that time. Um, and then I kind of just accepted that I was fat. Um, about two months ago when I started lifting again, I stepped on the scale. I was about 345. I'm now down to 307 um, as of this week. But my question is, I, I've heard a lot that it's impossible to build muscle really when you're in a cut. Um, I was just curious how that works with being obese. I'm eating about 2000 calories a day. I'm aiming for about 200 grams of protein. I just want to do the best that I can to make sure that once I lose all the weight that I have a, a strong body underneath. Yeah, no, no. Great question because you're right. You will hear that a lot that while you're dropping it's impossible to gain muscle. You're now, also going to love listening to this episode because I think this is getting themed right now. We have uh, we had two questions before you, very, very similar, and I know the advice is going to sound very similar. Yeah. Too. Now, you know, here's the deal. There's, uh, there's definitely exceptions to that. Now, here's the exceptions. When people first start working out, uh, that's the biggest one. Like when I get a new client or somebody who just kind of started working out and they start to, they'll, they'll start to burn body fat while building muscle. When it starts to get really hard is if you've been building for a while and you're hitting that kind of, you know, you're starting to tap up to that that limit of how much muscle you can build and then you're trying to cut. Well, in that point, uh, then it becomes very difficult. But if you're just kind of getting the ball rolling and you're really starting to get into resistance training, you can definitely build muscle while you burn body fat. Now, here's what I would recommend to you, somebody who's eating only 2,000 calories a day, who's already lost weight. Got a bulk. I would go on a, on a very slow or light bulk. I would bump your calories by maybe 300 calories and I would focus on getting stronger and building muscle. And I would do that for a good two or three months. And here's what you'll probably find at the end of that. What you'll find is that you did build some muscle and some strength and you'll probably simultaneously uh, burn some body fat. And then of course, here's the bonus. You'll end up with a faster metabolism. Uh, 2,000 calories for a guy your size is very low. I'd like to see your calories well mm -hmm. over 3,000 before you really try to burn uh, the rest of that body fat off. The, and the biggest challenge here is going to be the mental challenge. Is going to be, um, you know, oh my God, I my goal is to lean out, lose weight, and these guys are telling me to add calories uh, to my weight. So do not uh, let the scale fuck with your head. I mean, normally uh, the advice we give it, throw the scale away or put it away for months. Um, focus on building strength, focus on the movement and the exercises in the program, uh, but do not get hung up uh, on the scale. 
and it's and it's and you're gonna probably see it potentially go up a couple pounds. That's okay though. I mean, mm-hmm. as long as we kind of hover around closely to the weight where you're at right now. Now, obviously, if I saw you adding 10 pounds a week, I would need to adjust something, but that's not going to happen from a 300 calorie surplus. Not even, not even a 500 calorie surplus a day is going to put on a, a ton of weight on you. And in a perfect world, you actually kind of hover around the weight that you are. Uh, but you see yourself getting stronger in the gym and you're able to maintain that calorie intake without really going up. So if you are hanging around the same weight, but yet eating three to 400 more calories every day, then I know, I know good things are happening. I know that your body is actually starting to build muscle and it may be potentially losing body fat at the same time. And so we are putting you in a much better position. Now, Sal recommended to do that for a couple months and cut. Uh, I may run like a three to four week calorie surplus and then a couple days in the deficit and then go back to, you know, three weeks or so in a surplus, then do a two to three day calorie deficit. And so breaking up the bulk um, okay. every couple of weeks uh, for a few reasons, just for sanity, kind of reset a little bit, uh, uh, see how you feel, see what happens with energy, strength. Um but I would do that over the course of a, of a program and then kind of get back with us and let us know where you're going. Are you following any maps programs right now? So I, I've, I, I'm not, I've looked at anabolic, um, to build weight right now. I'm running five, three, one. Uh, tr- I was kind of trying to make sure I stuck with it this time. Cause I've tried multiple times in the past, but anabolic is kind of the one I was looking at. Um, what would you guys recommend there? Maps anabolic. I would mm-hmm. do, I would do maps anabolic. Do, th- do three found. So pick the option where you do three foundational workouts a week and then do the trigger sessions. I cannot stress enough how effective the trigger sessions are as a turbo for muscle building with the calorie surplus. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to do two or three of those a day on the off days with bands. You're just trying to get a pump. It's low intensity. Um, and do that consistently. It's a three month program. So it'll be perfect for what we're talking about. And if you don't have maps anabolic, we'll send that right over to you. Awesome. I appreciate that, guys. No problem, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, thank you, guys. Definitely a a theme shaping up today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Whether that was intentional by Jerry or not. Um, But great, great questions. Interesting, too. Everyone's kind of a little bit different place that they're at, but all very similar advice, you know? Yeah. Like he's all the way down to two thousand calories. Like, well, I know I was I was wanted to get into that, but I didn't get a chance. But um, in, in terms of of being able to find maintenance and just like it, obviously, like the goal is to lose weight. So a lot of times, like it, you know, clients will just keep going and keep like kind of scaling it down, bringing those calories down. Mm-hmm. But did we ever stop? Right? Did we ever stop and, and and find where that sort of meets where you're at in terms of like body weight, uh, and what you're doing in the gym and, and kind of find that. So then you can sort of scale up like your 300 increments or you know kind of gradually bring that surplus back for people that are in this place uh i want to make this clear and this i think every time i've said this i I get pushed back or i get people go what but you wrap your 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 brain around this when if we were trained if i was coaching you and training you and 30 days go by and situation one with you is we've lost 10 pounds after those 30 days that's situation one Situation two is you've gained two pounds of weight, but you're eating four or 500 more calories a day. As a coach, I want situation two. Mm -hmm. I'm actually disappointed in you, situation one, which sounds absurd for somebody who has tons of weight they want to lose. Totally counter. Totally counter. And and the opposite of what most clients would think. They would think, oh, 10 pounds I lost this month. We're doing great. No. If we're at 2,000 calories and you're you're dropping like that still, uh, my goal is to get your metabolism built up right now. Because if we want to lose this weight and keep it off forever, I know that a a guy this size is not going to be able to eat 2,000 calories for the rest of his life. It's just not sustainable. And so we need to get that. Not only do we need to address that first, but it's also going to make this whole process easier. Mm -hmm. If we can get the metabolism up by increasing the calories, that's right. And building muscle, it's going to be way easier to lose that total goal, but you have to first switch the mentality to that. 100%. Look, the, the, we do not have a weight loss problem. That's not the issue. Uh, Millions of people lose weight every single year. That's not the problem. The problem is sustainability, keeping the weight off. There's like a 90% plus fail rate with that. So if you don't think sustainability, you're giving yourself 90 plus percent odds of failing. 
So you have to approach this from a sustainability mindset. And when you do it in a sustainable way, your success rate goes through the roof. So unless you're looking to lose weight and gain it back and then some and end up with a slower metabolism, you got to do it the right way. And that's the way that we're explaining right now. Look, if you like Mind Pump, if you like our information, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. We have so many free guides that can help you develop your body, burn body fat, and develop sustainable habits to give you a sustainable, good-looking, awesome, healthy physique. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. If food rules you in mm -hmm. many different ways, breaking that chain can make you feel empowered. Now, here's the dark side of that, right? What drives a lot of people to do this is the sense of control. In fact, they'll do it worse when the life around them is very stressful and things seem to be falling apart. That's when they're most strict with that type of eating because 